What is up guys, my name is Chibo97 and in this video I'll be showing you how to use Xcode 8 with Swift 3.0. Now in this series I'm going to show you how to go from a beginner in programming to a paid professional and I'll show you how to develop your apps, put them on the app store for everyone to use. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do is obviously download Xcode and you can find that in the app store. You're going to need an Apple ID so you can create that one for free. So, when you open up your app store, you want to search Xcode, get it installed, and continue on with the next step. So, open up Xcode, and it's going to look something like this. You want to create a new Xcode project. It can look like this. And you want to click on Single View Application. Alright? So, when you do that, you want to click Next, and that's pretty much your template. So, you got your template down. Alright? Now, the next thing you need to do is set up your product name. Now, what do you want to name? this new project that you're going to work on. Now I usually um, come up with the new names randomly but for this video I'm just going to go ahead and name this test. Okay. Now team it's going to automatically be there if you sign in with your Apple ID I believe. If not um, I believe if you go to file or Xcode and preferences you can go ahead and set it up under accounts. All right. Now, organization name, you can go ahead and put that as whatever you would like. And organization identifier, I'm going to leave that as default. Make sure language is set to Swift. If you set it as Objective C, this video is not going to make sense to you. All right. So, uh, devices, you can leave it as universal if you want your iPhones and iPads to work with it. If you want it strictly on a certain device, go ahead and choose either iPhone or iPad. All right. So, we're just going to leave it on universal. I'm going to click next. We're going to select location, which is my desktop, as to where this project will be saved to. And here we go. Xcode has now created our project. It's going to, as you can see from the top right here, it's, it's getting our project ready. Okay, as you can see, it says ready now. But it's going to load all your indexes and get all your files all set. Okay, so this is what you get started with. This is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and just move my face the bottom and uh, yeah so this is your workspace now so here is our files on the left and here is uh, what file you usually have open and here is where you can grab your um, objects and how to edit your uh, files and everything up here so let's let's just uh, continue on with this file so this is your actual project right so you can expand it and minimize it like that now, when I click on that, you have your general capabilities, resource tags, info, build settings, and all that. I'm not going to get into this right now because uh, it will come later down the road when we need it. But for general, we do need this. Display name, you want to go ahead and name this test because that's what's going to be on the App Store. Your bundle identifier is when you upload it to the App Store. So it doesn't really uh, apply to us right now, but it will in the future. Your version also, and your build version also. That will be needed in the app store. All right. Signing, you want to make sure your your uh, account is linked to it. So when you deploy it to your to your phone or to the app store, that's what team it's going to use. All right. So if you do want to, I don't know if I said this already, but if you want to upload your apps to the App Store, you're going to need a developer account, which is $100. If you want to just deploy it to your phones or anything uh, local with just a USB plug-in wire, uh, you don't need a developer account. You just need to have an Apple ID account, okay? So let's get uh, started with the next file here. The next file is your app delegate. Now when you create a single view application, you're always going to get two default files. So you're going to get your app delegate and you're going to get a view controller. All right? And what these pretty much mean is your app delegate is what gets launched before your app what what gets fired before your app gets launched, if that makes sense. So it's pretty much um, what gets read before your app completely opens up. Okay. Now the next thing is your view controller and your view controller is pretty much every 
file that you create, you can link to your storyboard. Now, it doesn't make sense yet, and I can understand that, but when we go into main.storyboard, this is where your design goes. So as you can see, this is my view control right here. I have one view. So this is pretty much like a page here. And uh, that's, what, that's what this shows right here. So view controller scene is this whole thing right here. And in view controller, we have a view, which is this right here. Now, if we were to drag a button or label on here, you're going to notice that if we put this right here. Now, that gets put in the view. And now we have a label in our view controller. So pretty much every time you want to add a new page into your app, what you do is you open, you drag into a view, you drag in a view controller. But now that view controller needs a file to load load its objects or its uh, variables and all that. So that's why we have view controller .swift. So you can only link one file to each view controller. So what we would have to do for this is we would have to create a new file. Well, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just trying to make trying to make it easy for you guys to understand as to why we have files and uh, and all of that and what our views will look like. But anyway, the next thing is our assets. Our assets are pretty much what holds all our images in our app. So if you want to drag in, let's say, an apple, an apple or a peach or anything like that. That will get put into here, and if you want to use it in your app, if say if you have like a little image or a little picture box, you will pretty much load those images from here. All right, and you can change your app icon from here. So next is your launch screen storyboard. The launch screen storyboard is uh, it's the screen and pretty much speaks for itself, but it's the screen that gets shown when your app gets launched. So as soon as you open up an app, it's going to be for like a five second interval and then it goes away into your app. Alright, so it's like the pop up. And here we go. Info.plus is the next thing. That's all you really have to worry about here. And this we don't really have to get too, too much into. Um, but this is pretty much um, where you store your properties if you want to change your bundle name, if you want to put certain. Uh, Code here if you want to like say if you want to use a camera on your phone you would have to put a certain code in here. But like I said, this will come to us later. I'm just trying to show you guys everything really quickly. Okay, so let's get started. Let's actually show you how to create variables and integers in Xcode. Alright, so here is your view controller. Alright, this is what handles this view. Let me delete this one. This view right here that we put a label on. Okay. So if we go to view controller, this function right here is pretty much saying that it's going to get fired when that page loads. And as you can see it says view did load, right? It makes sense. When that page loads, it's going to run any code in, in here from this bracket to this bracket. So if I was to click on here and hit the left arrow, it's going to light up yellow. That's where it's ending, okay? So this code is going to run from here all the way to the end. Okay, so that's you did load. Did receive memory warning. We don't really have to worry about. I I don't not really that into that function. But anyway, let's get started. Let's create two variables. We're gonna create a variable, and the first one's gonna be a string. We're gonna do hit. We're gonna do var message. And what this is pretty much saying so far is var is short for variable. So that's how we create a variable. And the next word is what the variable is actually called. That's what you're going to refer it to or from. So we're going to say message. Now we need to give that variable a value, right? So we're going to go ahead and hit equals. And since it's a, it's a uh, string, you're going to need quotes. All right, we're going to just go ahead and put, hey, what, what is up? All right. And now, we click away, Xcode doesn't show us any more errors, and we just created a string to use. Now what if you want to, what could you do with this string? Well, just for testing, we can go ahead and use the print function. The print function is what prints anything in your console. 
So if we go ahead and type print, and we type message inside, what this line of code does right here is it's going to print this variable. Whatever this variable equals or contains, it's going to print out. So let's go ahead and just, on this simulator, we're going to go ahead and choose iPhone 5. Give it a few seconds to build really quickly. And notice that it's going to start indexing. And uh, I already did that, so that's why it's not doing it. But I'm going to go ahead and hit run now. And the reason why I choose iPhone 5 is because it fits on my on my little MacBook Air. So you can use whatever device you want. But there we go. Build succeeded, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just put this right about here. And you'll notice, actually, let me use this exactly. You're going to notice right here, right here, hey, what's up, right? Because the app already loaded, here you, we can see our label. But we can see that when the app got loaded, it already triggered this function. You did load and it printed out our message. All right, so now let's move on to a integer. Now, it's, the integers get created just like strings do. But the only thing that gets different is we don't use quotes. All right, so we're going to do var. Let's just name this age equals, and I'm just going to go ahead and put my age, I'm going to put 19, and there we go. You should see errors pop up, and they go away as soon as we click away. There we go. All right. Now, if we want to print age, what do you think we should do? Well, let's go ahead and just do print and put age. All right. Now, let's click run, and you're going to notice that there's going to be two lines of code in our console now. It's going to output our, our message and our age. All right, build succeeded. All right, there you go. So the app just got lo just loaded. You can tell because the label just was put on. And there we go. Hey, what's up? And we have our age on the next line of code. All right, so I hope you guys got the basics of Xcode so far. As I said, uh, it's going to keep getting harder and harder. So just stay tuned. And I'm excited to start the series with all of you guys who are watching. Uh, just please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching again.